Hey everybody, it's Prospector Jess, I'm back. Tonight we're going to talk a little bit about how, how high bench plasters form, now it's a mouthful, but specifically how you can spot things that would lead you to finding a high bench plaster of gold. Uh, let me define what a high bench plaster is. So let's take a look at this picture right now. So you probably recall seeing this from one of my previous shows. If you look carefully here, you see a sill of material that contains gold at the base of it. And then you see some clay silty material below it that trapped that gold. Now, the thing I want you to note is, as I pointed out before, you see these rounded cobbles? Well, they're suspended in the air. And if this thing is far enough away, which this one was not, this was actually near a creek or river that flowed and undercut the edge that you see. But if it was near, uh, a river at one time and then got suspended because the river changed trajectory. I'll draw a picture of that in a second. You'll end up with this high bench. Uh, it's a it's a ledge that contains gold bearing material in it that oftentimes is high and dry and way away from water even. So it's really uh, something you'll have to make special arrangements to get the material to water so that you can process it and and effectively uh, mine and and uh, remove the gold from it so you have some ab ability to recover the gold uh, that can get tricky uh, because if there's no water nearby and it's up in a high area in the mountains you know it can be kind of hard hard to deal with but that's a worthy cause if you discover some significant gold so what we're going to talk about tonight isn't so much the recovery as it is spotting these high bench placers and how to look for them so right now you can see this picture has these cobbles and and they're sort of suspended in the air when you're looking for a high bench plaster, that's one of the first things you're looking for is this, this spot right in here where it's all rounded. Uh, um, yeah, I remember this before. Let me, let me uh, see if I can do a better job with this. Uh, the problem is I can't show you my mouse. I remember this from before. You know, I can see it, but you can't. So if you look along the center line of this image, you see a, a sill or a a, an edge change between the concreted material on top. It's concreted because you see the little pockets where the boulders and cobbles fell out. That means that that stuff's strong enough that even in a rainstorm it doesn't come apart, just like concrete. And so that's one of the telltales as you're looking for this kind of concretion uh, where this material is, is, you know, sort of stuck. The other telltale is the rounded cobbles and typically interfacing to some layer that's below it that's quite different in texture, either angular or it's full of silt or it's something you know like what you see here. The idea is that interface is where you're interested. So we'll draw a picture of that in a second here. So, so that's kind of what we're going to talk about tonight. You can see over here on this side we have a, a picture of some angular material. This is a, a rock fall that is in an area uh, along the mother load in Route 49. This is just adjacent to that gorgeous California poppies and lupins and whatnot growing out of it. The idea isn't so much that you have all these flowers as it is if you look at the rocks and cobbles they're very angular. I had talked last night a little bit about or two nights ago about angular and I wanted to point out that 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 plays a role in not just gold identification but in general in geology and rocks and mineralogy you're you're looking at the textures of the things and how they break apart and in this case you can see lots of angular chunks they're they're broken in sharp edges you know typically you know triangle diamond kind of shapes or or blocky chunks that are square the idea is that they aren't round if you look at this other picture you can see how these cobbles that are buried on the top and that are falling to the sands below are rounded the distinction is that rounding occurs when you have water flow in large quantities and sands and silts and other smaller material like a rock tumbler will trim off all of those sharp edges and pretty soon a, a nice big chunky piece of rock will get rounded into a cobble and so I'm, I, need, I need to turn to PJ Live here. Let me, let me go full screen. So this, this square chunk there, square chunk will begin to get banged against the rocks around it and slowly start to knock off the corners and edges and pretty soon you end up with these round cobbles. The round cobbles tell that story we were talking about the other night. 
this has been in a water flow. So when you look at this picture, these cobbles have been in a water flow long ago. That's an important story that this creek bed is telling me. If this creek bed is up and away from the creek, but in an area known to produce gold, suspect a high bench placer that's been suspended. In the Sierra Nevada, a couple of these have what's called the Great Blue Lead. If you see large, dark and stained, ugly looking quartz, you know, uh, cobbles that have a lot of iron and maybe if you just, if it just got dug out and it's kind of bluish instead of reddish, it's in an anoxic zone. That means it's one of the Great Blue Lead. So it can be. The idea is these tertiary gravels are gravels that were laid down during the tertiary period in geology and geologic history. And they have a, a, a fame, I wouldn't call it notoriety, a fame of producing serious amounts of good placer gold. They also produce serious amounts of good to great quartz uh, nodules that you can that you can etch out and get nice crystalline gold from. And so it's all, you know, it's, it's, it's this prospect I'm looking at and this layering that we're talking about tonight. So let me draw you a real quick picture. So when we have a high bench placer, what we're talking about, let me make sure I got the right color crayon and I don't. So when we, when we refer to these high bench placers, what we're talking about is a, is a, a river cut situation where over the years, the river canyon has migrated in several periods to include the current canyon and perhaps ancient canyons. And so what ends up happening is the water right now is cutting down here. And at high flood, it might go as high as here. Okay. But what, what we're looking for in this condition isn't this situation. It's one of these old ancient placers. Somewhere up in here, it cut into an area that had those suspended rocks and cobbles from where this river used to flow and brought in gold materials and locked them in upstairs here somewhere. And so what we're looking for are these rounded cobbles stuck on top of what's typically a layer here somewhere that that indicates that there once was some clay material or bedrock even that ended up locking in some serious amounts of gold in the past and we just need to kind of unlock where it was well the telltale is this little this little area right right in here where the gold's trapping out is hanging in, usually on a concreted layer or is in a concreted layer uh, that simply means sands and gravels and calcium have formed concrete, you know, lime. And so what happens is this material locks in. Now what happens is down here, this could be bedrock. So all of this material could be bedrock right in here and right down into here. And this thing's been cutting, but up in here, there might be some bedrock, but there might also be some, some river cut material that's hanging out. So the bedrock kind of comes over to here, but it doesn't it isn't in this area here. And so what we're looking at is right in this area right here, we're going to see this change between the rocks and cobbles. That's this stuff and this bedrock or a clay layer. That is a distinctly unique situation that we want to take advantage of when we're looking for a high bench placer, that change in texture. And it could show up in other ways by being something as simple as, a change in the texture and a change in the plant life, a change in the things that you see around it. So you want to tune your eyes to look for change. What, as I look up the hillside, makes me think there's typically a horizontal plane or it might be tilted a little bit, but a change in the way the rocks, the soil and the, the life forms that take advantage of the rocks and soil change. And when that happens, you're going to focus in on where that change occurs and see if you don't see some rounded cobbles that are hanging in the wrong place. You know, if that was a river, it's uh, 200 feet up in the air. Why is it doing that? Go investigate, take your pan, 
take your pick and a bucket and start you know shoveling through a little bit of that bottom layer just where the two meet where the interface of cobbles and that silty clay material that's locked in and break it up and if you have to take some chunks of the concreted material especially right at that interface and take it down to the river and pan it out so you're going to need to take a couple buckets go up there get a sample take it down where you can pan it and work on it and see if there isn't some colors these are the little dots of gold that show up in your pan if you start seeing that then you have discovered a potential high bench plaster deposit and that means you've got to go figure out some other way of getting up there either bring the water up with a hose or take material down with a bucket and a pulley or whatever you're going to do but it, it, you know, it's a whole nother prospect so that's high bench plasters for tonight i just thought i'd bring that up to you and show you uh what we had uh it's it's important to recognize the differences in the types of material you're looking at the rocks and in this case the plants and and make that differentiation know where you're looking and what you're looking for so that you can find gold quicker so tonight is high bench high bench plasters and how high bench plasters form and how do you find them this is prospector jess and that's it for tonight good prospecting over now See you next time.